huge shout outs to Chief Walker Wakita. You won last week's giveaway of Detective Comics 1000 by Jim Lee. Stay to the end of the show because on deck, we're going to tell you how to win a goon comic done by Alex Ross and signed by Alex Ross. Comic Fam, podcast number 35 at the table with Overstreet Price Guide Advisor and Golden Age Expert. The Golden Age Guru. Guys, we're really going to have a great show here. We're going to get to discuss some things that happen on a deeper level with collecting. We're going to let you know how to buy a collection and when you should actually step away from a collection and not purchase anything. And the guru just brought some longs to Makasa because he went out and scored some books. And we're going to see how he did. You're going to have to stay tuned to the end of the video. Hit the subscribe button. We come to this table weekly to chat about expensive paper. And we want you here for the ride. Let's chat about comic collections. The FOMO gets real when you're dealing with large quantities of collectibles because those don't come up often. There's a lot of excitement to owning a new collection. Okay, but not everything is going to be a smart purchase, a good situation. And there's a lot of times where you're going to actually have to walk away from a potential collection because of red flags. And I think we really need to get into some of these um, situations that you need to just cut yourself away from. Yeah, sometimes you need to know when to walk away from a collection because it's very difficult, right? Isn't it kind of hard to walk away from a potential collection? The potential in a collection can be huge. And then the information you get about what's in it and what's not in it can be misleading. So you can have this false excitement or it could be even better than you expected. So there's that variable that the unknown that people can really feed off of. Yeah, it's like enticing to a degree, the process when you land the lead, which we'll get to in a little bit, but also when the process starts. But there's a lot of members in the comic book market right now out there hunting aggressively for collections with the hopes that they could find quantity, you know, possibly find quantity in numbers, move things and buy things in lots so that they can sell and try to build their own collections. And they're on the hunt. And we're going to get to some fun collection stories here today, but I want to touch on right at the beginning, things to look out for and reasons based off of our experience of why we said no to a collection. Like you referenced, a lot of people are trying to get books, and they're doing that right now, especially with what's happening in the world, more um, through platforms such as Instagram and Facebook and anywhere that you can connect with a larger group of people online. So that can automatically put up a potential fraud situation. So for me, one of the main things when doing that is that you have some type of financial recourse to protect yourself. And when you don't see that on the other end, like someone only accepts PayPal friends and family where you're not protected because you're literally just transferring money or this person wants a, you know, uh, a a wire transfer or a check sent to you and they're going to wait till it clears after two weeks. I mean, there's these situations where you just have to be really, really careful and know that if it's too good to be true and that's the boundaries that you're put in, then you should be okay to walk away because... If you don't walk away, you just gave away all your money. That's right. Another thing that I've found myself having to deal with is collections that are too large. Sometimes an attractive and potentially profitable collection isn't the right timing for a particular individual. There's been times where I would have been able to take on a collection of books, but because of space, because of other collections I had recently purchased, I didn't have the room and I didn't have the resources to move as quickly as someone else. And I lost out on the books. And I've also on the other end, put the money down thinking I don't want to risk out missing the comics. And then I overbought. I didn't get to the comics fast enough. And then in the long run, I ended up wasting money. Another one to be really weary about is the collection is overpriced. And sometimes that can be obvious, but sometimes it's hard because there's so many pieces and you just think, oh, there's this many pieces, I'll easily make my money back. But that's not always the case. So you really have to understand what you're getting into and that dollar amount and being able to move that material to recoup your funds. So being overpriced, it seems like a common sense one, but just it can sometimes almost trick you. So just be aware of that. And again, another reason to just walk away because your money is still really important and you will still have that at least to put into at least 
another book or a collection. You just said something that I want to like double back to real quick. You said the words, it'll trick you. I find that fascinating because that's exactly the feeling it is. You will almost find yourself like trying to convince yourself that this decision is the way you should go because of just the energy that got you to that point and how you feel in that moment. Yeah, and these are these are major decisions you're going to make. I'm not going like I said it's not easy because some of the biggest regrets are books I haven't bought or collections I I didn't purchase. But I at least took that information and I made my best efforts to buy it. So if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. But there are definitely times where I should have walked away for the amount of work. Now, I like to look at things optimistically. Usually I try to gain some knowledge from it so it hurts less, you know, but this stuff happens and this is the things that you learn from. So try to take these experiences and learn from what we're saying instead of having to yourself you know, fully experience the financial loss and loss of time sometimes that you're going to gain from just these situations. The next one on this list is something we've chatted about on this show multiple times. Even you've brought your own personal collection stories about comics being stolen. This is an aspect of buying collections. There's no way to be delicate about it. You got to know the red flags. You got to know when to walk and you got to know what to do if you feel like you're dealing with something wrong. Yeah, and this is probably one of the hardest ones to truly avoid because, I mean, if you don't really understand the situation and the, the tells of how a book may seem stolen, then that's, uh, that's going to be hard for you. But if you have that notion, it's just not worth it because if it does get found out or caught, you're going to lose your money and you're going to lose the books. So, And you're going to also lose your credibility because people are going to assume that you bought stolen books. So certain ways to tell are just... Um, you know, sometimes you'll get a collection of comics. A, if the deal is so great and there's like sticker prices on the comics that add up to like a thousand dollars and the person wants a hundred bucks, or you know, the, usually that means like, okay, these books might have come from maybe a store they were stolen from. You know, there's just certain ways to kind of get and, and vibes. Trust your gut, okay, guys. That's the number one thing. Trust your gut because usually it, it leads people in the right direction for things like this. You've even brought stories about how your own books were stolen and how you've had to track them down. It's not an easy process and not something I would wish on my biggest enemy. No, you're right. I mean, the the community is small. So when something is missing, something gets posted usually and someone finds out about it. So word gets around quick and it might cross your path and then you might ha be able to take that lead and connect somebody back to his books. Something that I've experienced multiple times when buying collections, especially when I was really hunting hard, it was like, I don't know, it would happen maybe 20% of the time where the excitement and the planning and the communication leads to the point where you're meeting the person who has the collection there. You have an expectation, you even have a price kind of in mind. And then worst case scenario happens, the deal changes dude i freaking hate this one this, this one's is, like oh man, i feel it on my skin like ugh. this is the worst because i mean sometimes the books will change like they'll be removed certain ones and all of a sudden you're just like dude where's the book oh i decided to pull that one you know or they took enough time to where they've educated themselves enough and realized that there's more value to certain books or they see a 9.8 on eBay and they just assume their four fives a 9.8 and it's the same value as, right. as that. So it's, it's tough because you don't usually find that out until you arrive. You know, so it's not like it's an over the phone. You've already made this emotional, um, not even connection, but it's emotional effort to get to the location. You're emotionally invested to buy these books already. And then, boom, you're kicked in the gut and realize things just changed. There's times when you're buying a collection and you're you're kind of like tallying it up in your brain. You know, this book here, this book plus this book. There may be these others here. The price, ah, I'm not really feeling it. But you, you try to figure out the math. You look at how many books you're estimating. You're also looking at eras so that you, maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe something's not there. But if you get a couple wins, like you see a few keys, you see the picture and you see that 12 center right there. It's like, oh, that tells me there's some there's some chance here. There's this is it's worth it me trying to go out there. That one book not being in that collection matters now. And that should matter to you 
when you're there and getting that bad news, just as much as it was when you found out that you're going to make that call and meet the person in the first place. If that book isn't there, don't just, don't just like let that go. That's going to now be a key part of that transaction or should put you in a position to think, eh, maybe I don't want this collection at all. Yeah, I just exactly. I mean, it just leads to so many other conversations with, with the owner. And then now you have to renegotiate if they even want to renegotiate. And uh, it's just a weird situation to be in. And probably the one on this list that's just the most uncomfortable and one I hate the most to deal with. You got to know when to walk away. And sometimes that comic book is the reason why you're there in the first place. So you need to be empowered to know that that transaction needs to be different or that it's just not right now. Because that one book may have made the difference in you making money or not. And we're going to get into uh, this conversation actually today with the collection that you got this very week. Yeah, I just picked one up yesterday. And so we'll go, to, yeah, like you said, a little deeper into that. And that'll cover some of these topics that I just, uh, that we just discussed. Um, but another one that's important is the funds. Okay. Like, again, another one that you think is common sense that you see this collection, but it's a stretch financially for you. Don't put yourself in this type of a burden if it's going to affect you differently, like your lifestyle, your family structure. It's just not worth it. It and it's okay to walk away because, like you said, you still have the money, and there's always other collections out there. Don't just hurt yourself to get the books. I've been burned on collections, you've been burned on collections. Heck, we know people who have been burned by just overbuying in those moments of vulnerability that we're describing. It, it's easy to get caught up in, oh, uh, we'll just add. We'll get more. It'll make the rest of the purchase easier if I add more to it. And the next thing you know, you're overextending. And I think it's all important that we discuss these types of things because you actually have a great example of a collection today that we can discuss. Last thing on here, it's, it's going to lead me to a question to you. Okay. Have you ever gotten a bad collection? Yeah, dude. Just buying something you think was at least going to be worth it and then you get home and you just feel like you made a big mistake. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, when you go through certain books in finer detail and you realize, oh, someone decided to trace the panels on this key book. Oh, I didn't count the pages to this book. Oh, I should have. Oh, the cover's detached. I mean, part of that is, you know, you doing your due diligence on a collection, but sometimes things happen so fast. That's problem. That's mostly the problem with this stuff. Things happen so fast and you put yourselves in situations where you feel the, the burden or the stress and have to commit almost, but just, you know, you, you really don't. You got to know when to be able to walk away. And you also have to be able to spot a bad collection, just comics that are overpriced. And it's a strange thing to just say, cause it seems like common sense, but when you're in the moment and you're in a time crunch and there's all these other factors that we're going to get into with some stories here, it makes sense that these mistakes happen to the best of us. That's right. So if the collection is crap, it's okay to walk away. Okay, it's, it's simple as that. Even though you put in that time emotionally to drive there and you get there and the guy promised you all these books are there and they're not, okay, or they're reprints. Oh my God, the reprint game when someone like tells you they have these books and you get there and they're all reprints. I've had that happen a lot. Sure. The collection is garbage. So it's garbage then and it'll be garbage if you buy it and take it home. It's still the same garbage. So just avoid it. I want to hear from the community. Let me know about your collection stories. I know you got some weird ones. Everyone gets them. They start collecting them as you start this hobby. Those are some of the best stories, the collection stories. You get to share those with your peers because everyone's got them, like you said, man. But the next thing I want to touch on are the hot keys this month that we have for our mystery mail call service, which click the description down below, guys. It's a monthly service that we provide where you guys pay and uh, you get awesome books. And I get to provide some real key heat for you guys. Yeah, I don't know if the comic fam knows, but the Chase books, the big keys, they're brought to you by the Golden Age guru hunting for the comic fam. And you pick these every month and then members of the community have a shot at getting a grail every single month that they subscribe. So let's chat about some of your favorites. Yeah, I'm just going to touch on a few right now. We have an Avengers 48, okay, which is the first appearance of Black Knight. Hey, there's a lot of spec on this character. The movie's coming out, and they're supposed to have them in it. So that's an exciting book to see. And then we also have one of my favorite Spider-Man covers, Amazing Spider-Man 122, Death of Green Goblin. Classic book, classic cover, great, great story. And then 
we have a Conan number one. This is like the big book. You know, every month, you know, it's easy, right, for you to pick out some of the big keys. Like, you know, this last month we had first Hobgoblin go out. Like, these are, you know, books that you know everyone's going to love. But we always got to find that, like, one big book. That 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 book's, like, that's going to make someone's year, right? And you're the one who floated this idea. Conan, number one. That's right. Somebody has the chance to win this book and several other books. And that's what I like to do. I like to bring maybe six to seven books so that it spreads out a little bit. It's not just one person getting a key. So this one is going to go out to some lucky winner out there. It's a Conan number one, 9.2. First appearance of Conan the Barbarian. Just a great Marvel Bronze Age goodness. At the table with Fire Guy Ryan. Greetings. We don't read enough comic books with the community. Wow, harsh. It is harsh, but we talk about a lot of things. But you know what? We read comics all the time, and we want the community to do it with us. Read more comics, and I have the best way you can do it, because not everyone knows how to get into titles and how to even order comic books. It's kind of a a little bit of a task to get your ongoing comics, isn't it? It's daunting. How do people typically do it? Used to be you had to get at least one catalog, if not several, for different publishers and go through each one and highlight or circle or, you know, write down whichever ones you want every single month, give that list to your local comic shop, and then they will order those comics for you in a pull list and set them aside. That's right. So you need an LCS. You have to have a local comic shop around and you have to go through a lot of different things. Well, every month we're going to be putting together this video, going over some highlights of this month's previews guide. Some of the stuff that we're most excited about, some stuff that we're adding to our pull list that we think you should know about with the hopes that it helps you at your local comic shop to put your orders in. But if you don't have an LCS, you actually can join ours. Now, not my shop. This isn't my my comic shop. It's not yours. But we do share the same LCS, don't we? We do. It is run by Russ Bright, one of the uh, co-hosts on this channel. That's right. Russ, the comic sensei, you know him from the top 10 trending list. He owns Mill Geek Comics, eight years strong, and he has the pull box system for his members. I've been using it for a while now. It's been, I want to say, almost a year that we've been doing that. You get, you pick everything you want on the website versus through the catalogs, and it is much easier. You have much, much tighter control over every little thing that you want, which is nice for a collector. Yeah, never miss out on a variant. Never miss out on any ongoing titles. You have to order comics in advance. They come out, you know, months later after you order them. So this is how you can do it. And I want to chat about some exciting stuff that's happening because the August preview is out and you only got a couple weeks to add to your order. I'm going to put Mill Geek Comics Patreon link in the description. I encourage everybody, as would Russ, to hit your LCS first. Right. Support your local comic shop. But if you are not one of the few members that have the benefit of living next to a comic shop where you can go and frequent and be part of this community, well, Russ could be yours. By joining his Patreon, you get a shelf at his shop and you'll never miss comics again. And he ships your stuff in a box. So that's always good too. And you get access to this online system that we are about to walk through with you. So you can kind of order your things digitally and get a, and get like we're talking about, get your, get your comic list under control. Get your list under control and let's chat about the thing that I'm most excited about in the August preview. The thing that I added to my pull list, we got to chat about, ooh, Walking Dead number one coming out again. What's going on, Ryan? I'm not excited. (laughs) I did not add this to my pull list. I'll be up front with that one. Be real with the comic fam. This is on mine. This is our personal pull list right now. This is what's coming out in October. That's right. Walking Dead number one is being re-released in color this time with... Some goodies in the back, some director commentary, kind of like Robert Kirkman bonus feature type stuff in the back pages. Read it again. It's time to revisit the historical independent series that took the entertainment world by storm 17 years ago. Can you believe it's been 17 years since Walking Dead debuted in comics? I cannot. And can you believe that they're going to debut it again for probably the next 17 years, taking every individual issue, adding some commentary from the creator and coloring Every page. It's going to be like rereading it for the first time. And you know, I love me some Walking Dead. That I can't believe. (laughs) All right. Ryan. All right. You're not excited about Walking Dead. I want to know Ryan's pick for ongoing series. It feels like a cop out because I honestly, this is my favorite book that Marvel was putting out. You bring it up nearly every time I see you. That's what I'm saying. Like, it feels like a cop out for this section because this could go any month because in my opinion, this book is just that good. Daredevil by Chip Zdarsky. All right, we have Daredevil, issue number... It's issue 23 of this run. 
So they're not even that far along, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. But it's so good. This was nominated for multiple Eisners, dude. Letterer, cover artist, even writer. For good reason. Ryan, spit some specifics. Specifics, you say? Well, we talked about how we're going to start doing more content soon. And I feel like I'm going to save Daredevil for something you and I read and discuss at some point. I want to keep that option on the table because I am a... I'm, I'm, I'm really in love with this book. Like, I, I can't describe... It's like... Did you watch the TV show on Netflix? Absolutely. It's 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 like that. Ooh. Like I want to. I, I can't really describe it better than that. It feels like like a continuation of the TV show Daredevil, like dripped in darkness and just like moodiness. And but it's so good. It's it's a story about Daredevil, but it's also telling a kind of run along story at the same time. It, it's showing Kingpin, and you're, you're getting you're getting a lot of stuff about like his mental state of mind being the mayor of New York, and he's kind of starting to like lose it a little bit. It feels like. So there's two plot lines kind of running side by side that are uh, they're getting me. I'm, I'm on board. I'm all over it. Daredevil. A lot of people are, too. But I really love it. Oh, why don't we chat about some variant picks of the month? You know, I love me some variants. But this month, the legend Alex Ross pulled out all the stops and he's releasing what is called timeless variants and you're going to see a handful of them available for pre-order this month because there's multiple titles getting a classic Alex Ross portrait shot and my favorite you know it's got to be Colossus yeah I'm, I'm we talked about Alex Ross a while ago and I'm a big fan of the way he draws reflections that Silver Surfer one really really spoke to me too but like I had to make the choice not to get any of these because for me I had I, none or all like I would have to get this whole set, you know, and get them all side by side and looking real good. Like all the portraits that Daredevil cover that you were just talking about got a timeless variant as well. This particular book that I added to my pull list because I couldn't say no to Colossus was New Mutants issue number 13. But heck, he did a Spider-Man variant. He did a Spider-Woman variant. The Thor variant is so classy. I think there's one for each of the Fantastic Four. You know, pretty much every main Marvel character. There's a lot of these. So, like, that was the main reason I couldn't get any of them, because I can't get all of them. That's too much. I want them, but I, I can't do it. I can't justify that. <sighs> Life. Oh, boo -hoo. Ryan's a reader, which is why I'm enjoying him being here for this, like, comic analysis stuff. But you know what? The collector side of me, I'm hoping it pours over to you, and pretty soon you're just going to start adding variants that you don't even I want. haven't. I, ha I know. Like, I, I can't justify buying a comic I'm not going to read, just because the cover looks cool. We'll get you there, man. Comic fam, hit the like. We'll, we'll get Ryan there. Sure. I'll be a collector instead of just a reader one day. All right. Well, you know what? Since you are such a reader, I want to hear what your indie pick of the month is. This actually kind of ties in to another new... Is this going to be just a constant plug <laughs> video like for we're, you? We're, we're going to talk about it later. Yes. That's kind of another footnote you could say to a lot of these. Like We're talking about a lot of this other stuff in depth in various other places, but we are doing a feature on scout comics that's right we're gonna be doing a whole video about the scout comics box here in actually just a second so stay tuned and since that's gonna be a whole separate deal because there's so many dope comics to get into we won't be covering as many scout books in this preview section but this book was actually on your previews poll before we even got this box correct before we started doing this box before i think it was before i even found out that it was going to be one of our variants in the mystery mail call recently that's right and if you comment down below It'll enter you to win this virgin variant of Ben Templesmith's rendition of It Eats What Feeds It, issue number one. And then it's also Ryan's indie pick of the week. Spoiler alert. Yes, it is. The uh, third issue is solicited in this, in this month's catalog. So issue three should be out in October. The first one, which I honestly didn't read when we had it for our mail call, but I read it for prepping this scout video that we're doing. It, it blew me away. Like I, I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. You know, you're taking a, a risk on a lot of these smaller ind independent books that, you know, you're not necessarily... You get a Spider-Man book, you kind of know what you're getting into. It eats what feeds it. That was all I knew. Like, I knew it was kind of scary. Other than that, let's just see what happens. Ooh, it's a, we'll it's we'll a get great into surprise. It. Yeah, we're going to get into it more in the Scout video that we're doing. Like, really soon, like after this video. So. Right, we're about to start recording it. However, the third issue... Like, I love the first one that much that I could safely put the third issue down in this whole catalog as, like, the thing I'm, I want to read the most. Like... I really want to see what happens. The first issue has such a good cliffhanger at the end. New number ones. Oh my gosh. All right, August. I mean, this is something I do every previews is there's going to be new titles, new yeah. stuff being introduced to the community. And this month, boom, I, 
they had this idea and, and the fact that they nailed this deal down is monumental. I don't know how they did it. Shout out Arun over there at Boom Studios. But we have Keanu Reeves with a pen in his hand. He is writing a comic book about himself. Yeah. It should be interesting. It's called Berserker. It's a character that's modeled after Keanu Reeves in a world where it's hyper violent and he's just going on a killing spree. I haven't read this. I'm staying away from some of the synopsis because all I needed to know is that we have Neo who's in the comic game now and we're about to get more celebrities writing comics just getting a ton of people into this awesome community. I noticed Keanu Reeves was uh, he's playing a character in the upcoming video game Cyberpunk 2077 made by the Witcher people. And now he's writing a comic book. I'm all in, dude. You know, Keanu's, Keanu's stepping out of his little comfort zone here a little bit. I feel like there was a little bit of a Keanu lull for like a decade. Is there like, going to be like a hip hop album dropping soon? Oh my gosh. I can only hope. I mean, heck, Jeremy Renner, he went on and started doing Shut some- Shut up. Did he really? He, he didn't do a hip hop one, but he's <laughs> okay. like a rock star now. I didn't know that. It's pretty, it's pretty cringeworthy too. Oh, no, let's, let's play that intro for a second. religious feeling almost it's like, like yeah, creed it's, it's very bit. creed feeling. you know it's terrible man oh but you know God. what he did it and he's hawkeye but you know uh. what that's not all ryan we have to tell the community about the extra stuff because you don't just get comics you don't just get lost in the titles like idw and marvel there's something at the very bottom of this previews that has nothing to do with actual physical comics. Right. They group everything by categories. And I was saying earlier, you can go by publisher. The, the first categories are, yeah, there's Image, there's IDW, Marvel, Boom, Dark Horse. Once you get further down to the bottom, you kind of have a generic comics section, which is where a lot of the really, really indie stuff goes. I think that's where most of the Scout books and like the Zenoscope stuff gets in there. So you might want to like dig into those. But beyond that, you get down into like books, graphic novels, statues. There's like... There's shirts, dude. Shirts, hats cards you see people posting stuff on instagram getting that latest statue mm -hmm. i've got the uh silver surfer with thanos on the cover like a comic book t-shirt and i got not this one but you know I, I ordered that shirt on there so i typically treat myself tom haverford style and i go through and you know find something pretty fun and what's interesting is that this month both of us picked the same thing yeah like immediately it was also the first thing on the list so like that might have had something to do with it, but it, I it didn't. Is this? I would have picked this. What, what do we do? Animorphs. Animorphs in a hard cover. What's going on? I feel like I talk about animorphs way more on this channel. Comic than fam. Any of you guys like Schol Scholastic, isn't it's it? Scholastic. Any of you Scholastic readers or like collectors? I've been thinking about collecting some Scholastic stuff. Like the but book fair at elementary school. You remember that? They used to come around and like the library and set up and. That's right. You get the Animorphs books and you, you just do the corner where the pictures change over and over again. You were the guy who read it. I was the guy who was just like, oh, I got a little bit of like a television here. <laughs> but what are they doing, Ryan? I'm learning so much. Tom. Tell me about Animorphs. Animorphs is being adapted into graphic novel format. Yes, it is. I'm pretty sure this is the first time this has happened. I, don't, I can't think of any other time it's ever done. I can't either. And there's a trade and there's a hardcover version. Right. Real quick, on the count of three, what'd you get? Hard One, cover. two, hardcover. That's I can't count to three, apparently, but I can say the word hardcover. It's okay. I'm excited. Like, it's, it's a comic book version of Animorphs. It there looks like go. they're doing one comic book for each one of the one books that was in the series, so we might be looking at, like, 50 of these suckers. I don't know what they're doing. I'm just getting the first one for now. That's, that's all they've solicited in this catalog, so we'll see what goes from there, but Animorphs. What did you add to your pull list for August? I want to give everybody a little tip. If you're looking for variants, I mentioned Walking Dead issue number one as being something I'm really excited about. Well, if you are interested to see if there's a variant of any of the comics that you pull, well, if you click on the book on the pull list website, it's going to open up the screen that will tell you about the synopsis. But there's a very important button that's on there that's typically pre-selected to not show you variants. Yeah, it's weird. You gotta so it pulls up that little screen where it gives you the synopsis, and then down below that it'll it'll give you the option to just order this one issue or subscribe to the series. So every month it will just be there. You don't have to click it every month. Which it'll is, auto which is order nice. your cover A's. Correct. Or there's a uh, little button at the top, like Tom was saying. You have to go in there and and hit the button that says show all items. That's right. And if you hit all items, you're gonna see variants. And for this very issue, you actually have an variant that you can get of Walking Dead number one. That's an homage. To the classic issue, Walking Dead number one that came out in early 2000s. They should have an option there, too, where you can subscribe to the variant of a series. So 
if you want to be like me and you want just the B covers for certain series, you can do that too. That's right. This is how you can keep up with all the comics and you don't miss out on anything. You can get it for the cheapest price you can get it. And last but not least, we did tease it. DC Comics. Wow, is it a little bit of a cluster to get your DC uh, Comics now? Yeah. I mean, that's just one of the weird side effects, <laughs> casualties of this COVID universe we're living in now. I wouldn't have expected DC Comics to break away and for that to be the new world we're living in, but here we are. Well, if you want to get DC Comics, you have to have an LCS now. You have to actually have not just an LCS, but a comic shop owner who's going to facilitate the orders of these comics. It's kind of the old school way. So you can't conveniently order your DC titles off a pull list anymore. It's a bummer. I'll be real. It's a bummer. But fortunately, Russ, the comic sensei, is there for the community to facilitate that once you join his Patreon. So how do you order DC comics? You got to have an LCS and you got to have a comic guy. Russ makes it super easy. He's been sending out the last few months an email to everybody at his shop who has a pull list there. And he says, hey, here's the catalog for DC specifically. Email us back at this address with everything that you want. And here you go. We'll put it in your box when the uh, when the orders come in. Make sure to comment down below and enter you to win this Scout comic book. And while we're on the subject, sitting here with Ryan today because we got a couple of boxes to open. Scout Comics. Scout Comics is dope. And you know what? We just went through kind of the ruckus of what it is to order comic books in 2020. It just is what it is, comic fam. And we're going to do what we can to make it easier for you. But Scout Comics, they're already doing it. Right. This right here, I think, is the way of the future for a lot of independent publishing companies. It's so easy. Okay, what do we got? We have Scout Comics monthly subscription box. It's $33.99, and you get 12 comics a month. Right. And you get the titles that they released that month. No more having to figure out what you're going to order. You just get everything. This is like a select all checkbox next to Scout Comics. If you're you know putting stuff on your pull list and you just want some Scout books, here you go. This is, this is the Scout Comics. Those are the options. That's what you get. In the you, Scout box. Use code TOM101 on scoutcomics.com to get 10% off your Scout order. I recommend it. But I'll tell you one thing. I don't get a kickback or anything like you know other referral links do. We paid for these. Yeah, we bought these because in these boxes, aside from there being a list of comics that everyone gets, they like to throw variants in there of some of the issues. Yeah, that's the important thing to mention, too. This is not a mystery box. This True. is not random. This is all of the issues that Scout Comics puts out for that month. Yeah, you can see all of the issues on the website for the month that you can buy. So yeah, it's a different kind of subscription box. But there is a level of mystery because sometimes in this box, they like to include variants. Some but they sketches, like they like, yeah, the original art. Some goodies. That's pretty cool. So we're going to crack this box open and see what's inside, which we already did. But we're excited to bring it to the community because we read some books. We get to show you. All right, let's do it. Okay. Pose. I love it. I love the comics coming fresh in a box that's very, very well protecting them. I enjoy that box. I'm going to keep them in here too. Okay, let's get all the comics on the screen because it was a great month. And you know what? We may be a little behind, but we'll just have to get caught up because August boxes are available and there's a box in between this one. Dude, it was a great month. There was a lot of great covers, man. There were. There really were. I'm not normally somebody who... I try not to judge comics or any book really based on the cover, but you can't help yourself. You can't, especially when they're independent titles and you're not familiar with the heroes or the characters on them. And the way that we're going to orchestrate this is based off of really our gut feelings of what we were most interested in. And Ryan, looking at all these covers, it was a great month. What were the three that really caught your eye that we got to chat about right now? So out of these 12 comics that we got in this box, I went with, with Murder Hobo. I went with... North Bend, and Yasmeen. Ooh, okay. Well, tell me why you picked Murder Hobo. As far as cover picks go, something about Murder Hobo was, was screaming out to me. Joseph Schmalky, man. He's awesome. Yeah, he's a good writer. Uh, Jason Lynch was also the artist on this book. What about this cover made you stop in your tracks? First of all, while getting the, the uh, assets for this particular segment, this is not the main cover. This was a variant. So it was uh, the variant that drew my eye. I like the colors. I like how dark it is. It's hard to tell what's going on. 
but the just the concept, the title Murder Hobo just spoke to me. It wasn't until I opened the book that I realized it's like a it's like a term, it's a common term for like a D&D RPG, you know, a role-playing person, kind of like a troll in that game, like somebody who plays the game whose entire goal is just to run around and and make a mess and just cause havoc and be kind of a jerk. So, it's a comic about a group of D&D role players. But one of them is just crazy. It, it, it's it's crazy. It's really weird. It's funny. It feels like a like a trippy. I know there actually is a Rick and Morty D- Dungeons and Dragons comic, and I imagine this feels a lot like that. I even got that that vibe from the art style. It feels like a like an adult animation, like a cartoon. This feels a lot like a cartoon. Is a really good way to describe it. Actually, it was a very pleasant surprise, especially because Murder Hobo. I was expecting a Serial killing homeless person. <laughs> That's not what happened. That's not at all what this is about. Oh, maybe an uh, uh, idea that you should trademark. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, Murder Hobo is definitely one that I was excited about. Um, this month, the the cover that I... Oh, dude, I've been so pumped for this issue. And seeing it in my hands in person, it, the, the creature of the loggerhead, the right. legendary loggerhead creature on cover... Is it's just popping, dude. This story is so sick. And it's written by Brian Silverbacks. He actually drew it as well. That's this another is, that's another variant, actually, too. Brian actually did the variant cover as well. And I was stoked to get it. This comic book, I kind of got surprised because I was expecting it to be horror, but I wasn't expecting it to be kind of like a mixture between Swamp Thing and our homies comic, The Sav. Hey. So basically what you have is Loggerhead, Bloody Bayou, all right? This is issue number one, and you get introduced to this creature, this legendary mythological beast that has like a very Turtles vibe, but a little bit more savage looking. Oh yeah, a lot lot scarier than a Ninja Turtle. Oh my gosh, like the Turtles will beat you up, this guy will eat you. Slice your face into little bits and... Yeah, it's scary. It's a revenge story a little bit. It's like a ghost story that kids tell around a campfire when they're going out to camp in the swamp. Is that something kids do? I don't know. I don't live around a swamp. Yeah, well, these, you know, these kids do. They get into some trouble, and you don't really know what kind of character this is going to be because he's kind of written as something dark, something you don't want to cross, something that's going to put you in danger. But you find out by the end of this issue that it's not really what you think. And that he may be more friend than foe. And I was hoping for a monster book, and I got it. Well done, Brian. That's actually a really good point. It is very much a monster horror comic. You know I love me some monster horror, and we're going to get into some more horror stuff here in a second. But let's chat about your second pick. I went with Murder Hobo first because it looks silly and weird. And then I, I looked at North Bend because it's just kind of dark and mysterious. This issue, too, has like a dark house kind of got some low street and lights on there there's like a bike laying on the ground there's as much sky as there is like land right and and darkness and and i just get the sense that this is an abandoned kind of creepy locale where something has just happened or is about to happen anyway this cover made me really want to look at it which is interesting because uh i've had north bend on my pull list since it started this is issue two so i don't have a lot to read to catch up but i'm i'm looking forward to getting to get to that point the third issue actually just dropped too so i've got three issues of north bend now to to get to Ooh, will we bring it back on the mic maybe we can put that in the community's hands because my second pick is also one that i haven't caught up yet but it had to make my cover pick because white ash issue four is out and this is stunning i it stood out among all of the covers the color work is great and Heck, any time that the female body is drawn really well, it's just, it catches my eye because sometimes it's make or break for an artist. Like sometimes artists can do it really well. Sometimes they can't. I got kind of almost a Peach Momoko vibe to this slightly. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, not so much because of the color work, but the line work. And issue number one was so good that I want to read the next issue. So comic fam, we want you to vote. Which one do you want us to see reviewed on the mic the next time we hit the mic to chat comics north bend issue number two because we'll get caught up or are you going to give us a little extra homework and have us catch up on white ash i'm down to read either one of those personally well you know what else i was really down to read this week what's that was your number one pick yasmin yasmin i've been waiting to talk about yasmin for a while i'll be straight with the community Shout out James Hake, the third, the president of Scout Comics. He's a good friend now. And 
I actually left him a voicemail after reading this comic. He'll vouch for me. And I literally had, cause like I read this and I was like, this is freaking brilliant. And I need to tell him how good this is. So I left him a message and was just like, dude, I'm fl- I'm just floored. I was not expecting it to be what it was. And I can't wait for issue two. He responded back with like, it's a beautiful comic, huh? It really is. And like, I got, I don't, I can't speak for you, but I got based on this cover, I got the impression this is going to be some kind of ghost story. Supernatural vibes right? on the cover. It's not, not That's, even a little bit. These are more memories that is, that she has going on behind her head here. This is not some kind of ghost that she's talking to or anything like that. Comic fam, if you're tired of like superhero comics, if you don't really want to read some war, you just want to get caught up in a good story and character development. Here you go. It gave me kind of a, uh, almost a Naomi vibe. In a sense that like it's a story about somebody who I really can't identify with and like a life experience that I have no hope of ever emulating. But in a, in a sense that you're getting a, a new, fresh story of a... You know, this, this, they both happen to be young female characters here, but the sense of just otherness. Like you're, like you're saying, superheroes, you know, they're typically like American stories. You're getting something that you're at least quasi-familiar with, you know. This was a cool kind of real life story about a girl's life in Iraq right before ISIS invades and how her family has to evacuate the new house they just moved into and flee. So it's pretty heavy. There's a lot of real life uh, subjects and topics in here, but that's why it kind of drew me in in the first place. And it's all it's handled really well. It's written really well. It's drawn really well. And it's not preachy i want to say like i feel like a book like this could really really come a little too strong and just kind of turn you off in a way but something about the way this is handled it really it really draws you in and you're and you're kind of like you're really worried for her this is a a stressful scenario that she finds herself in yeah you're stressed about her past because you're getting a timeline about where she came from that's the other part but there's also a timeline of her in the present to kind of show the dichotomy of both lives she's like led flashbacks so you see you see her and her family fleeing explosions and right. battle scenes and action and and stress and and just scary imagery right but then she's over like but you're cutting back between that and then her adjusting to her new home in america and her new school and the way her family is adjusting so you kind of you know that they get out of that okay at least most of them do yeah we're gonna find out just how much they were affected by the political past that they right. were a part that they experienced and then setting up for whatever they're going to encounter at you know at her new house like this is the cover this shows her at school which i don't even we didn't really get a whole lot of that like so it's it's interesting to see where it's going to go from here so you know shout out to everybody at scout for making yasmin happen because that that was my pick for this whole box i would say written by saif ahmed and fabiana muscolo this team right here is onto some big things and my pick of the month for real, did you have any doubt? When I was reading this book, I, I knew. I got, a couple, I got a couple pages into it, and I'm just <laughs> like, Tom's going to say something about this. I don't know what, I don't know where, but Tom's going to talk about this book because this is a Tom book with capital letters. Written by Brenton Lengel in Hyendo Park. We have Snow White Zombie Apocalypse. It's literally what it sounds like. It's a one shot. So you're getting a lot of extra pages in this one issue. This so is I'm a the big biggest fan of book that. in here, I think, right? This, this one's heavier than all the other ones. Dude, I was just dying. It is funny. It's fun. It's a, it's it's a, fun. Cool, it's a cool story. All right. We have Snow White in the zombie apocalypse. And this is a zombie apocalypse where those infected basically start to mutate and then they like turn into like this creature. And then there's like their inner being gets burst out from within them so there's just like hybrid uh right. humanoids and it's freaking gory there's cool it's- ideas in here and it's a creepy mix of the, my, my favorite aspect of this book was how it mixed two genres that i'm personally sick of it took the adult fairy tale kind of genre and it took the zombie apocalypse genre and smashed them together so you get like zombies running around with snow white and rapunzel and prince charming so there's kind of a cool exploration of both of those Snow White is asleep and she has to be woken up by Prince Charming. After being kissed by Prince Charming, she asks, where are her friends? Where are the dwarves? And she gets the response that makes this my pick of the week. My favorite panel of all the Scout comics sitting in front of me. She gets the worst response ever. Oh, 
You've been asleep for 28 days. Oh, They're all dead. It's 28 <laughs> days later, he says. Yes, In dude. bold letters, just to, just to draw, you know, just to make it a little more clear. 28 days later, Snow White, what's going on? And then, of course, you see just like this two-page spread of just dwarves being slaughtered. Just zombie dwarves. Oh, my gosh. Zombie dwarves, comic fam. Hit the like button. You got to read this comic book. And also in this pile, we have an ash can. There is an ash can in here. That's right. Scout Comics, they, they respect the collectors. You know, they know how to make variants. They know how to do some dope stuff and how to announce things so you know what's coming. So you can get on a possible new title that may be hot, may have some option news, maybe a little bit more legs in the community, right? You know, they collect comics over there. Yeah. So they like making ash cans with first appearances. And we have, probably have to use the bleep button, shit show. Shit show. There you go. Shit. Show. Now it's an ash can. It's shorter and who's it by? Written by Adam Barnhart. And the artist is Samir Samau. All right, we have a superhero world where superheroes once kind of reign supreme, but they have died out. They have been killed off. And now we are left in the future with a character that is just not living his best life. No. But he's a former superhero. He's a former champion. Right, like there's been some kind of demon invasion or something. There's like five, six pages in here, so you're really getting like a taste. Yeah, you're getting a taste of the world that that's filled with unique superheroes at one point, and now you're left with the remains of this kind of dystopian future. That's yes, that's that's my favorite aspect. This book tiptoes around a lot of things that don't do it for me, subjects and like tropes and themes in comic books that are kind of worn out for me. There's a, there's there's a, a new original superhero team in here which is, you know, it's kind of like a lot of, you know, new information to keep in my head. And they're really, they're clearly parallels of superheroes that we recognize. There's like a speedster and there's a all-powerful Superman-esque character in here. So you get some of that. You get a little bit of, of the post-apocalyptic demon invasion. I like the fact that we see the aftermath, though. That, that, that really intrigues me. Like, we see after the fight. We know it didn't go well. Like, superheroes are pretty much done for. And then you also have kind of a, almost like a, like an addiction metaphor going on with this main character here who is on the cover just chugging a beer. So that, that alone lets you know what you're kind of getting into. This guy's going to have some issues. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing how we peel back the layers and see what his life used to be like. Yeah, I'm excited to read about more issues of this book. If this was not an ash can and this was a full issue one, I think I would have responded a little more favorably to it because you, you get just a little tasty taste. Like a full, a full Ryan's exposure still to hungry, this world. still hungry is what you're hearing This is my right first now. ash can too, by the way. So like, it's my first taste of like, wait, this is it? This, it's over already. Oh, that's <laughs> well, right. It's thin. It's a, it's a smaller comic. Well, I like comics where there's a lot to look at. That's yeah. definitely one of the things I'll, I'll uh, give to this comic here. I like the art. The art, there's like, you kind of get lost and it's really enjoyable because you're trying to find those parallels, as you said, to mainstream comic superhero tales. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of seeing like, oh, it's kind of an homage to this. Oh, this fighting style, you know, shout out sure. to some Kirby action shots, you know. So I'm feeling the superhero vibe of this run because there's not a whole lot of superhero stuff mm -mm. in this pile. So not we're going to be keeping an eye on this run. Not in this month's box, at least. Not a lot of superhero stuff, which is kind of a, for me, kind of refreshing. There was one title in this pile that we called each other after we w did our reading and said, yo, we got to chat about this book on the mic because we fell this in love with This was a cool it. box, but we got to talk about this book. It eats what feeds it, man. I freaking love this comic book. And it's not just because I did a Ben Temple Smith exclusive. I didn't even read it back then. I, I feel like I've said that several times <laughs> in doesn't this matter. video. There's a lot of comics to read and we're getting caught up. Comic fam, hit the subscribe button. We're going to be doing more ongoing reading content. But I read this book now. The sexual tension, my mm. man. That's the first thing that we both pointed out to each other. It like, is strong in yes. these pages, dude. Yes, it is. I freaking love this book, man. I, love I can't it. wait. There's only three issues, and the third one comes out this month. We're on we're on number one. Look out for our coverage of, I'm assuming, issue two in the next box we cover. All right. But issue number one, it's a very simple story. It is. It's really just this, this what, teenager, right? He's a Young kid. Young adult. Yeah. Yeah? He's going... He's got to gotta be a bit more an adult with, sure. with how... This, with where uh, this is going. I where think. this is going a bit, yeah. Right. Where I think it's going. I think that's why I like this so much. I have no idea what's going on. Correct. And like the way the way the book ends, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I gotta read the next issue. Where is this going? So it eats what feeds it. Is written by Max Haven and Aaron Crow with art by Gabriel 
Ayuma's arc. Fantastic art in this comic book. It's almost simple, but it's not. It's so purposefully done to make you just kind of get lost in the pages, but it's beautiful. It's covered in fog. A lot of stuff is obscured. For a reason. Yes. It, it, it's really cool. It stands out, and it's, it's useful to the story. But the story itself is about this guy named Kenny. That's right. He's looking for a job. I got the vibe that it might be his first job. Yeah, he's a young adult. Right. So he sees an ad for like a caretaker, I guess, slash gardener. He doesn't really know what he's getting into. Right. He's like a house assistant person. He pulls up into this like mansion. I think the first page is something along the lines of him saying, as worst case scenario, I die. He's clearly getting some kind of vibe from this. So right away, I get uh, my like, impression. It's foggy. This looks like a haunted mansion. But yes. then who answers the door, I think, changes his mind. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, it is a it is a rather attractive, mysterious older woman who answers the door. Yeah, he finds her very attractive. Yes. And Kenny kind of gets roped in, I guess you could say. This is the part where we were chatting about the sexual tension being real. Right. There's a lot of... Uh, this is another indicator for me where I was getting the sense that maybe he's on the younger side on um, when he doesn't seem to pick up on a lot of the creepy vibes that she's putting off. So right away, you get this one-sided kind of power play. Well, dude, he's got this like this uh, veil on. He, he he's, It's cloudy, right? Like Even he, inside the house. It's yeah. like lots of like fog and there's not a lot of lights on because she's got some kind of sickness that she's kind of hinting at, but not really... Yeah, she's she's alluding to there being problems and that yeah. she needs his help around the house. And for every time that you would think that he would be like put off, like this isn't going to be for me, he gets hit with just a little too much kindness that makes him just like again the the kind of like the 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 fog lights are on. Like he's just he's got he blinders. Blinders. That's what I'm looking for. He's seeing what he wants to see. So when she grabs his hand and like takes him over you to know? the other room, he's thinking, "Ooh, this is kind of this isn't such a bad job after all. Like I could do this." But don't go into that room. Don't go into that room. Right? Like, what was up with that that one page sp- you know, one page shot of what looks like some type of murder took place in there, but it, it wasn't? I don't know. Best case scenario, it's like a room where she makes her own meat. That's right. You know, like, like, like she's some kind of butcher. I don't know what's going on, Hopefully, but she doesn't want him in there. not people. Yeah. This is the vibe. I'm, I don't know. It's, it's one issue. I don't know who this lady is. Maybe she eats people. Okay. Maybe she just likes, to, you know, chop up cows and make steak. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what her deal is. But that room is scary. So that's a red flag. That's when you go home and find the new job. What we do know is that Kenny decides to take this job in this issue because she offers him a really good deal. He's going to make money. He's going to be able to live on the premises and help out. And there's this one really quick panel where he thinks he sees something from his room, like across the courtyard, like in another window of the home. Yeah. And I don't even know how to describe what he sees. It's something I had to read. I had to look over it twice. And it's like, it's hard to even tell what he's looking at. But it's, there's something in the room, in the window that's like differently colored. So, you know, there's like an object or a person or a thing in the room, but it's not like, it's not supposed to be there. And it clearly freaks him out a little bit. It freaks him out. And it makes, you know, he's trying to figure out if he's going to take this job. Francois this lady that is giving him the job, his potential new employer, she's being super kind to him. Did you notice that she's like mostly kind, but there's only like one scene where I think it's actually when she's pulling him out of that room and she grabs him by the mouth, uh, like gets aggressive with them. I did not them. notice that. Get out of this room. You're not allowed in there. So you can see she's, there's like this anger to her that she's like letting on, but it's the only time you really see it. Something's happening under the surface there. But you know, he decides to take the job, and when he goes to basically greet her for the first time, I would assume it's basically like day one, we end this comic book with him meeting her in a room where she is clearly dressed to impress. Yes, she is dressed down to, I think, just her like underwear, right? Is that what we see? She's like greeting him, clearly trying to make some kind of point, and he's like startled and taken aback, and that's how it ends. I, what is going on in this comic? I'm all in. I'm reading all three issues. I can't wait to read it. I, I must have misread something. So it's only three issues? It's a, it's a little... It's a short story, this man. This is going to make such a cool trade when it's done then. Uh, absolutely. Comic fam, we want to know of the two comics that we chatted about that we haven't read yet, North Bend as well as White Ash. I have some catching up to do. Which one did you want us to bring to the mic to discuss? Are you reading any independent comics? Do you read any Scout comics? We want to hear from you. Don't forget to use that code TOM101 to sign up and get some dope books from a great company. I am very pleased with my first dabble with, with Scout comics.
I can't wait to get my hands on the next box, which is actually a lot coming a lot sooner than I had anticipated. Stay tuned. Jeff, I want to chat about this collection find that you had this week because when you were telling me about it, I heard about this whole process from the beginning, from the lead to you bringing these comics for us to look at basically for the first time in my living room. And I thought that's just a perfect example to bring to the table about how this stuff works because this is a very average collection. This is a, a, a journey, a process that I've been through many times. And if the comic fam hits the subscribe button, they'll be here for the ride so they can hear more of these stories. This is what's kind of funny about the whole being a comic dealer, investor heavily, collector, where you're really out there. It's kind of a feast or famine, all right? So that's the other thing. There's dry spells, but when things come, they come at once. I have four collections this like last three weeks that have all come at once. Forget the fact that I've been working on them for like, you know, six months, three months. They all decide to come and converge on the same two, three week span. One of the things that we were chatting about just last week was comic grails and that they come up at times that are unexpected and you just got to be ready for it. The grail lead is just as rare and as inconvenient as the occurrence of a collection lead. Yeah, again, that, that timing situation financially could be really interesting because right now, I mean, I just paid for four collections, okay? And so, like, it's all at once. So it's interesting. This one is the least expensive one that I just picked up yesterday, but I think it makes the most sense to discuss here for now just because it's more of a broader collection than most people are going to run into. The other stuff's all golden age and keys. So... That's a different conversation we're going to bring to this table here really in the next couple of weeks, which is really fun and exciting to show because you guys are going to see an original 400 book Golden Age collection. Okay, original owner from mid 40s to late 40s. That's got a lot of great books. Original owner war collection, which is different uh, owner as well, like high grade. So, I mean, there's just some good stuff. You guys got to make sure to hit that like and subscribe and stay tuned for this. Yeah, we definitely have a lot of opportunity to dive into collectibles in a way that other channels don't because we have different members that are buying collections in different ways. You got Russ at Mill Geek who's buying collections at his LCS, which is traditionally different types of collectibles, you know, different clientele. You're over there hunting for collections that have been intact since the 50s it's crazy stuff but it's nice to know that these things are still out there that these comics are still intact and and kept together over time i want to chat about that lead when that lead comes in that feeling that you got because you just had to experience that a lot this last week yeah because leads can come from anywhere guys that's the thing you you never know when they're going to come and when you hear them it's exciting it's fresh you're you're so hopeful usually okay sometimes if you do it enough there's a little pessimism you're like yeah it sounds too good to be true but just being known that someone reached out to you or you got ahead of somebody else of a collection, it just feels really good. When you find that lead and you have that mental thought of like, could this be too good to be true? Isn't it 100% of the time, like if you end up with that collection or or it was so good, like you got it, you won, you got it. There was a time that you had told yourself that this could just fall apart at any moment and this could be absolute trash. Like you, you, even if it all signs are pointing go like green, it looks great. You've had so many times that it was, uh, uh, just a bad deal. Something went South that even when you're looking at it and you're giving the money to the person, there's still a part of you. That's like, what part of this is going to go wrong? (laughs) That's the skeptical side. And that's true because it, it, it's usually the case. You're so used to being let down by the experience that you almost don't let yourself at some point get too high, okay? And then when you're really going through it, you you can either get more excited or it's about what you expected or you're let down. So there's definitely that huge range. But yeah, giving that final money for me um, has lately been really exciting. But gosh darn it, man. As there was many years of just learning where it was just like, Oh uh, God, I'm not too sure here. <laughs> I'll, well, I'll just, just take it and make it work. Let's chat about your recent collection. All right. This week, a lead came in. Now, spoiler alert for the community, sight unseen. You didn't know what was all going to be in this comic book collection. Three long boxes. We'll get into specifics here in a second, but walk me through this from the beginning because this is how it happens. Comic fam. 
Yeah, so this just happened to come from a uh, distant relative of mine on my wife's side mentioned to a coworker of theirs that um, I'm into comic books. And f- I thought he bought storage units, okay, and found a collection of comics. So he sent me some a kind of spreadsheet of some idea of what's in there and then made a description of a lot more stuff, 60s and 70s, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, great. And the price seemed fair. And as I'm going through this, it's like, okay, that's fair. And the story continued as I spoke to the person. All right. And he let me know that he was offered like $400 by a comic shop. I was like, well, if a comic shop's going to offer him $400, then I was like, okay, well, I'll just offer the same. All right. It's from a distant relative. I want to keep good relations with people who are close to me that are passing my name around. Sure. Because that's also um, a thing a little bit. That's that's part of the pressure too. And I also think it's part of the the process that we should highlight here. If you're looking to, you know, put yourself into situations where you can acquire collections, multiple comic books, is that your network that you're building. You know, it may be deals for the future. Exactly. So, God, it's so complicated because again, you you get you get hungry for leads at times because it, it is a feast or famine thing. Like I mentioned, you'll you'll just be in a drought for the longest time. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you almost feel desperate and then it hits quickly, but that desperation will lead you to bad purchases potentially. And so, but if you have somebody who's giving you leads, you almost want to keep feeding that a little bit. And there's a lot of people who have that guy who just seems to be out there finding stuff for them. It's so true. This moment that you're experiencing tends to lead you to do things you wouldn't otherwise do. In certain moments, you know, going out of your way more than you think you would. Maybe at the start of this deal, you're thinking the reason why you would do it is because it's, you know, it should be a quick trip. It should be a really quick deal. You know, maybe it's a little bit more expensive, but the convenience of X, Y, or Z will make me actually want to go through this process. And you find yourself doing things. And how often does that like not happen? It's like the opposite. Oh, man, this collection specifically was... Dish, I want to hear about this collection. Yeah, like, okay, so I wasn't super excited because it's a more of a modern collection anyway. It's not really in my wheelhouse, but I was like, okay, it's worth it. I'll just, I'll buy it and I'll keep the relationship going. And I like GPS to directions to get there. And I see that it's like through a ferry system and like you gotta go right on away. A, you had to go on a ferry? Yeah, which is supposed to be faster. But in my gut, in my experience, you always miss the first ferry that you get to. So you're going to wait. Like on a, on you, so you're on a car and you go on the ferry on yeah. the car and everything. You know, how long was a ferry trip? Or you can drive around and okay. it's a little longer, but it's at least consistent and you know. Okay, okay. so you got to go on a boat first. Okay. So I have my son with me. Okay, I was like, listen, man, you're gonna help me with this collection. <laughs> We're gonna go through. Shout yeah. out to all the dads bringing their kids along their their hunting finds. Yeah, I had to separate them a little bit from Fortnite so we can do some work <laughs> together. I was like, listen, man, you're taking a break today. You know, I got this collection in. You're going to help me file it. I mean, just just do stuff, okay? So this was one. I was like, we're going on a trip. We're going to ferry. You'll have fun. <laughs> Dude, I used to do that with my dad. He'd make me come along. And I'm telling you, man, it made me really hate comics yeah. until I was 20. And then now my whole life is comics. So you never know. Well, the longer they hate comics, the longer I get to keep them for myself. So <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, so you're on the ferry. You're with your kid. He's upset. That he's, you're bringing him along to buy more paper from the 40s. What's going on? Not the 40s. This oh, excuse me. No, no, this isn't the 40s collection. This is like you're thinking 70s, uh, 80s at best. Yeah, I mean, I know it's modern 90s stuff. I know what it is, but there's supposed to be some other things in there. And like I said, I'm already agreed to the price. I'm coming. But the trip, which I thought was going to be maybe, uh, you know, three total hours, give or take there, half hour and a half, and then come back, became like a six hour ordeal because the ferry, like I said, I got there. You can't get on the first ferry. You got to wait for the next one. So it's like 40 minutes till the next ferry. Then you drive across and you get there. And then there's traffic for some reason. Okay, so comic fam, ridiculous. let me break this down. All the things he's saying right now, um, if, if I'm, I'm assuming if I was in your, in your shoes in this moment, you're probably thinking, for one, you got to buy these comics now. Like the amount of time you're putting into this, the deal's done. If there was any chance that the deal wasn't going to be done, it's going to be done now. Yeah, the deal is done. I already agreed <laughs> to it. And look, look, ethically speaking, generally, if I agree to something like that, I'm going to come through on it. Okay? But uh, hypothetical, though, the deal changed a little bit more. 
you would probably be in a position now with how much work you've put into it to be like, screw it. If he wants more, 50 more dollars, I'm going to give him 50 bucks. No, I would not. That would be my walk. Out of pride? Point. You wouldn't You wouldn't do I it? I would not. Okay. But the problem, the, my problem was because it took so long, I didn't leave enough time for myself to go through the books. So when I finally got there, okay, which took like over two hours to get there, GPS says an hour and a half, but they don't count for you missing a ferry. They don't count for you that ferry traffic off the ferry takes forever to even get moving, you know, because now you're on the roads with everybody and everyone's like stopping and turning. Anyways, took forever. Okay, so I get there, meet at a storage place, okay, and I walk in there. It's the only thing left in this guy's unit. These are his comics as a kid, okay? I thought it was a storage unit purchase. And but what it was it was just comics and storage. Man, that doesn't happen very often. It's like the same owner from from way back when. Yeah, like they are. It's weird how often that does happen. Yeah, for, for especially for '90s stuff, right. you know. So I get in there and there's three lonely, sad boxes looking there. Okay? Dude, these boxes do not look good, man. When you brought those in, you put those on the table. I was like, oh geez, man. Like they look, they're probably protected, but I bet those boards need to be replaced. Yeah, and so one of the main things I did like though that saves me a ton of time is that it was alphabetized. It was all bagged and boarded, okay? It was sorted, and so it's ready to go. That's That matters, right? That's a huge difference. I mean, just to bag, board, price, and sort a long box can take, God, two hours at least? Right there. The value of time is so important to consider, especially during these transactions. You know, if you're positioning yourself to take on a huge workload because stuff isn't bagged and boarded and it's not alphabetized and you have to bag and board every single one, that's cost. That's your time. And that goes into the transaction. It's not just about strict worth of said comics. And I think a lot of people know that who own books. So if, if you bring it up, don't be afraid to because I think it's understood and they truly understand the amount of work. Otherwise, they would have done it themselves. If it was easy and the work was simple, they would have done it themselves. So you had to do this sight unseen because of the time restrictions. How did that feel? Oh, God, that's a good question. You know, I it felt strange because I've always looked through every collection I've ever bought. But because I trusted the person and the source, I figured there was comic books in the boxes. And he sent me a spreadsheet. He spent the time. If I have any issues, I could always reach out to him again because... It's co-workers with a family member. Like, yeah, you're not going to sit there and argue over 50 bucks or something. You know, it's, it's already, it, the deal is pretty much done. So you're taking them. Yes, I'm taking them. I'm not taking the ferry back. I'm driving around. I know how long it takes me driving. No crazy like, you know, what if the ferry doesn't leave on time? What if the ferry, I have to miss it and take the next one? So just a good hour and 50 minutes instead of like two plus the other way, got home. I was exhausted because it's just been a long week, but I got the collection home and now it's time to make it work. I'm excited to chat about what you found in this collection. Comic fam, stay tuned because we're going to actually dive into what was in those long boxes here in a second. But while we were at this table, you legit held up your phone and you were like, I got another one. Like legit, here's another lead. You, what's going on? I just confirmed and wrapped up the deal. I kind of highlighted it a little bit here in the show, but literally as we're sitting here, it's confirmed. The deal is done. Deal's been made. I'm super excited for it, and it's going to be in our after show. That's right. Stay tuned on our audio-only platforms because when the camera shut off, the mics, they keep rolling. Available on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. Let's chat about now the success of the hunt. You got this collection, and I want to... Be real with the fam. When you told me that you were getting this collection and you were giving me updates throughout the day, you know, about how it happened and then where you were going and what you're going to have to do. And then even this morning, you know, when you got the collection and you got it back and you're going to bring it over here, I, I felt the excitement in your tone change and the things that you were most excited about not being talked about as much and the stuff that you were excited about most I was a little surprised to hear about. I wasn't hearing so much about the comics that were in on the inside. What I was hearing about was how nice it was that they were all bagged and boarded, that they were alphabetized, that it was a well-put-together collection, that there were runs. But anyways, you're smirking. Please I'm explain. Sm I'm smirking because you're right. I was just reaching, okay? I'm trying to stay positive and optimistic, <laughs> all right? So, so newsflash, he's not that happy about the collection. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's look, it's, it's already what it is, but... 
it has some decent stuff and whatever. I'll make my money back and I'll do fine on it. Well, you said you're going to, you paid 400 bucks for it. You yeah. Know, you already and, said that. So yeah. So I'll probably double my money. You know, it's a little bit more work than I had hoped, but you know, it's going to be more packing up of sets than individually selling books. <laughs> How did it go play out? Like, tell me about like, this experience, what you felt and, and you know, was that, was there truth to what I'm saying? Like, you, you kind of were coming full circle with this thing. Yeah. So like they were in the back trunk of my car, popped the trunk of my car when I got home. First thing I did, I had a look. Okay. Sure. Cause like you gotta I just look. waited. Like I was like, okay, I'm home. I made good time. I'm going to look through these boxes really quick. So I do that. And it's just like, how does it feel to look through boxes you haven't actually gone through yet? For the first it time. feels good until you start seeing which you don't want to see. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. It's really exciting until you're like fathom, 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 which there's nothing wrong with fathom, but there's only so much fathom you want to see. Yeah, and ascension and darkness. Shout out to Michael Turner. <laughs> so I'm going through. But I do get to some things, you know, like oh, there's a decent spawn run there and it's a little higher numbers. So I, I know there's some value to some Ooh, of those spawns. Okay, this is fun. So th you're going through this for the first time. So the first thing I told Jeff was, hey, you go through this, you're going to see certain things that your gut tells you you're going to pull. Right now, you know that there's a key there. There's something that you can move quick. I, I told you to go pick those books out. Because I want the community to see the things that you knew off the cuff. Because these are books that I'm betting I'm going to know. And the community should know every single one of them. So let's go through that list. This is the first stuff the guru pulled. I wasn't 100% sure on what spawn numbers were important. So like you mentioned, I just grabbed what I knew. So here's just some. One of them is Wolverine's limited series. Okay, It's a four-issue series. Frank Miller did the covers. I had issue one and two. And it's his first own series, even though it was limited. But people love that book. It's a wall book at any convention you go to. And it was exciting to see those two. I was hoping for the full set. It's only four issues. But at least I have number one and two there. Definitely books you see at every show. You're going to see them at like 60 plus percent of the booths. And it's a classic Wolverine key book. And one that I would be excited to find in any collection. And two that I'm sure everybody knows. The next book I recognize in that collection is one we all really know. It's Venom, Lethal Protector, number one. Classic cover. Venom in his own first title. Dude, he's the anti-hero, and it's a classic book for Venom. And this is the cover A. It's a respectable book, $10, $15. Yeah, and there's a, that's one of the highlights of this collection. There was a lot of Venom stuff in there, so I'm really excited about. Um, but I was hoping, I was hoping I get that retailer incentive of gold version in there or the uh, Air Black version. Yeah, that's really the first thing you think of when you come across a book that's common, but that there are variants to it that are worth more money. You got that gold version, you got the error version, and then what's the last one if you if you don't have a color variation? You hope for a new stand. That's right, and that's going to be worth about double. And for this book, it actually does maintain its value quite a lot better than others that are new stands during that era. It's typically a strong forty to fifty dollar book in VF plus. So like I mentioned, there was a good amount of Venom in there. And another one that I recognize, because I actually have this book already, but this is the very first She-Venom. Dude, this is a book that's gotten so popular in the last few years because of Venom spec. But you see this also at conventions a lot, like way more than I think you have than a lot of other Venom keys. Yeah, I mean, it's just a short run. It's uh, Venom Sinner takes all, I believe. Yep. And Number uh, three. Number three. So... That was, like I said, he had probably 10 to 12 90s sets of Venom story arcs. So there's actually quite a bit of value for that if you're looking on like listed sales. So that was one of the other reasons I got most excited about this collection. So well, let's chat about grading because this is one of the books that will make you stop going, okay, hey, I can make some of my money back. I can recoup. But then you have to apply other variables because just because you have a key doesn't mean that you're going to make out with a good return. Because the grade on this, I mean, dang, this is pretty rough. Yeah, so I believe this used to be a 9-8. I really do because people pack this box, all right? Well, this gentleman had his box, but it was loose. So it bent in the middle. Like ah. you see people do. They just neglect the box or they don't put enough padding. So that box and most of the boxes had a bend and... 
that one's got a color break, so I don't think it's going to be better than a 9.4, you know, and that's with a good press. On the table, I knew from afar why you would pick it out. I'm looking at a spawn number one, but I am cracking up right now because that is signed. And I wasn't expecting to bring this up on the podcast today, but there's no better time than to chat about the real spawn. This, guys, is a historical piece. Dude, this is ridiculous. And right. A lot of people don't know about this, no. Comic Fam. Hit the like button. Slap it for us because this is why you're here. We got to chat about why this comic book even exists in the way it does. Because if you go onto eBay, you're going to find many copies of Image Comics signed by this gentleman right here. So Al Simons used to work for Image. Wait a minute. Who? Al Simons. I thought that was the name of Spawn. So Spawn used to work for Image. <laughs> no, seriously, though. We all know Todd McFarlane developed Spawn, right? But apparently, he got permission from an employee named Al Simons to use that name for Spawn's character. Like back in the early 90s when Image was just getting rolling, they probably thought it would be funny. Yeah, I mean, how flattering would that be to have a character named after you? I mean, like, really? Okay. Well, he ran with it, too. He ran with it like you wouldn't believe. He dressed up as Spawn, allegedly, at conventions and would sign comics saying Al Simons, a.k.a. Spawn. Yeah, this guy would it actually would affect him a lot longer than the few years post the debut of this image character because he would cosplay. He would hit the con floors. He would sign Spawn 1s and other Todd McFarlane Spawn collectibles, toys. You can see this. I mean, it says on this Spawn cover, signed by the real Spawn. But this is just a dude named Al Simons. You know what else he would do? Hmm. He would go on to get sued by Todd McFarlane. Because he ran with it and embraced it to the point where I believe he's trying to take some type of ownership for the development of this character and get some type of financial gain from it. Dude, this guy would go on to make a book in the mid-2000s called The Art of Being Spawn. He speaks about the Spawn franchise as if he co-created it Jack Kirby Stan Lee style. Yeah, man, it's hard to believe that, like, he has this perception, if it wasn't for him just sharing the name, really, that there would be no necroplasm supernatural character named Spawn. Isn't it crazy, man? So, Comic Fam, when you're on the hunt and you find yourself with a signed copy of an image comic book that says it's signed by the real Spawn, well, it's, it's definitely signed by some person with the same name as his real identity. Yeah, I mean, you got to think there was some type of character design ahead of time before you just apply a name to it right you don't start with the name here's the name you know like jimmy joe buckshot and then you have no characters i'm for it, right usually you think you're gonna have a character already i'm imagining tom mcfarlane already had some kind of design going and jimmy then joe you had a shot <laughs> i don't know man, whatever. <laughs> i'm not saying this copy is going to really gain any type of value from the signature but it was just a fun conversation piece something that i think uh we really had to bring to the table here, you know? Dude, I feel like you, if anything, were probably let down a little bit because didn't you think that was signed by someone important first? For a second. <laughs> You're like, I, I got the actor who played Spawn in the movie to sign it or something is what we were thinking. But you know what? Hmm. There are less Spawns signed by Spawn <laughs> <laughs> signed by Todd McFarlane. <laughs> that is very true. Comic fam. CBCS. All right. Let's uh, chat about what? What are these other books that are on the table? Okay. So these other books I really wasn't fully aware of. And it's only through the use of the Key Collector app, which I got to tell you, man, like I said, this isn't my wheelhouse at all. So having... Like the new books? Yeah, the books. new books. And I don't know how it could be really anybody's at this point without a little assistance because there's so many volumes of just... And so many variations of titles. I don't even know how you keep up with what's good and what's not. Well, what, the way you do it is you use code TOM101 and you get a free week of Key Collector Comics, the best app that exists for comic book collecting available for both Androids and iPhone users. And you use this. What would you typically do? Yeah, you so know, if you didn't have a, a, a app to go through these comics. Oh, dude, I would be eBaying every single book on sold listings. So it was just like a ridiculous amount of work it would have been. So I had three long boxes of stuff I didn't really know that much about. And by the end of it, I was able to figure out what spawn issues later in the run were important. And so I had quite a few. There's just a couple here now that I just pulled specifically because they're about 
15 bucks each. Dude, the spawn category on Key Collector is one of my most utilized categories because there's so many books that are on there that you're, you'd are you be surprised that move up in price so quick. It happens randomly, it feels like, but there's a lot of low count spawns and it's kind of hard to remember if you're not like a spawn diehard and know all the issues. I've referenced that list many a times. Yeah, you really get to find out which are the Greg Capullo keys, which ones have the lower production you know, uh, at the time. Yeah. A couple of the spawns I pulled out specifically, and there were quite a few there that still had some value, but one of them is an Angela cover by Bre Greg Capullo and Todd McFarlane. And then another was the first Archangel spawn here, number 77. So another Capullo, another McFarlane cover, but both have value to them. And it's through this app that I was able to find at least another two, $300 in value I was not aware of. Dude, and you're looking at a classic Deadpool key that I know regularly goes miss on the con floor and at like local comic shops. Yeah, I've seen this book around, but I just passed over because I didn't know what issue number was, what title was. I just recognized the image here. Yeah, that okay? negative space, you can tell it from a mile away, you know? Yeah, it's a very strong uh, image and you just it's hard to forget it because it's so memorable. But this is the first time Wolverine and Deadpool battle. Which Did you is, realize that that's what it was on the cover? I didn't know that until, again, I am looking on the app. It's weird. You have to like directly like really stare at this cover to make it out. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't necessarily scream Deadpool to me. So I never probably would have guessed that. But again, it's an in-demand book and it's got value to it. Another one I found in the Wolverine title was Wolverine 131. Apparently, this is a recalled issue for the use of a racial slur by Sabretooth. Such a random book to have to be on the hunt for that you're only going to spot by opening it up and checking that panel. Well, not only that, but like while learning about this book and scrolling, I'm able to learn about surrounding books as well. There was a Wolverine 102.5. I didn't have it. But apparently there's an issue between 102 and 103. It was a 102.5 that has a ton of value to it. So if I ever see that, I will now know to find this obscure book. It literally took me 10 minutes to go to through three long boxes. Like if you imagine, that's like about 250 books bag and boarded. If I did not have some type of resource for that, I would literally have to look up every single book on eBay for completed sales, hoping I find something when I can literally just finger scroll and just get through it. Comic fam, we appreciate your time today. Thank you for watching our show. We're going to continue this conversation on our audio-only platforms. I want to hear about this deal that you made. We appreciate you. Go follow me on Instagram. Comment down below. I enter you to win this right here. Goon, Alex Ross cover signed by the legend himself. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. <laughs>